It might look like I'm in a void right now, but bear with me. Do you want to switch your border, your face cam border for your stream, from something like this to something like this? Pretty cool. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's actually pretty simple. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be going over a animated border for your stream, be it Twitch, YouTube, whatever platform that you want to use, as long as it's going through OBS. I know I could set it up through OBS. I don't know if I could set it up for anything else, but I know I could set it up for OBS. And the good thing is OBS is free, which is awesome and really, uh, really great tool that's surprisingly free. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. So what we're going to go into first is Affinity Photo. We're going to make our border, our base, our foundation for the border. Then we're going to apply that border to Premiere Pro. After that, we're going to throw it into OBS and show you how it looks pretty much like you saw in the intro. So I made a box like this. And what I like to do is I like to center it. So go to center, alignment, middle just to keep things a little more good on your orientation. And uh, it, it looks a little weird when you export it and it's just off a little bit. That's just me being nitpicky. If you're not that picky, sure, it's fine. And actually, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that it gives a little bit of wiggle room for what we're going to do. So again, center and middle. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a stroke color. So we're going to take the stroke here up in the left hand corner and we're going to choose whatever color you want. So now you have your color here, these switchers here, they will switch between the fill color and your stroke color, the outline or yeah, the outline, stroke, outline, same thing, same concept. Now, the thing we have to do is to get that centerpiece out of here. You can take the same shape and you could erase it out of the center. That's a way to do it, but this is the easier way to do it because you literally can click one button and it's this. So you click that out of there and it's gone completely. The cool thing is you go to here and you select the stroke color. This will only apply your changes that you make only apply to the, the stroke here. So you basically go in this left corner, you pick stroke, and you drag the gradient along. And eventually, in about a couple seconds, we are going to choose a color or a color gradient. So what I like to do is I usually go with red and blue to start out with, and maybe I change it as I go. So now you have your rectangle and the colors that you like. You can manipulate it a little bit further, but for the most part, this is how it's going to be for your foundation of the border. What I like to do is maybe add a little bit of a bevel, maybe maybe a hint of it. You kind of decide if you're going to do that, you could add a little 3D action there. Or maybe even just go all the way on the slider. You could go a little more bubbly, or you can go kind of like that. And just get more of a hazy kind of 3D. Let for just for fun, let's go with a slight 3D. It might not make a difference when you get into Premiere Pro and you start making effects over it, but maybe it'll be cool. So let's see how it comes out. So now you're gonna go Control Alt Shift and S, and you're gonna save this as a PNG. The reason why you're going to save this as a PNG is because you want to have the transparent background. All right, so we're in Premiere Pro right now. We added our border. This is the one we were working with before, and you saw before that I manipulated. Not the one that we just made, but you could pretty much use the same thing, and I pretty much did the same thing. I think I may have switched the colors. Actually, I just flip-flopped them. So what we have here is our simple border. We're going to make a copy of this way. Alt, if you're on PC, I can't remember what it is on Mac. And you're going to click and drag it. Make a copy. An exact copy. But the next thing we're going to do is add a blur. So we're going to use VR blur for this. So go to immersive video under your video effects and tag it on that. I use 50 on that. 
and you can see the difference. So if you turn it on and off, nice blur effect. We're going to use the digital glitch and apply that there. So that blur, you see, it applies on that and it blends really well with the background. This is just to make it blend a little bit better and not be so in your face. If you want it in your face and stuff like that, there you go. That's how it's going to look like that. I will do an, a before and after with the blur on and off later. But for now, we're going to put the blur on and work with it like that. Then master amplitude is going to be your, like the width of how much you want seen. And I want it very subtle. I don't want it to bleed too much into like the face cam itself. So you can see here on me right here. I don't have anything on me, but if I have, like, let's actually bring it back. I don't want those glitches to be right in my face. So if I was to take this and take the master amplitude and crank it, all that stuff will be in my face or in something that I don't want. Also, it will bleed outside of it and maybe be covering something I don't want. You can go for that effect if you'd like, but for me personally, I want it to be subtle. So it's going to be just a little bit. And for this one, we're going to go, let's go 12, just because. We might change it later, but for right now, let's go with 12. Now we're going to go to distortion, and your distortion is going to basically mean what type of glitch effect you're going for, the style, the uh, complexity of it. So we're going to keep distortion at the same. Our X, Y, and Z is what we're going to work with right now. So we're at 50 right now for the X. So you can see that's affecting the left and right right there. The Y is starting to get the top and bottom. So we're going to get that a little bit more. I'm getting a lot of Star Wars vibes for this, like the red and blue uh, lightsabers. And then the Z goes a little bit further and gives a little more texture to it. So a little before and after action here with the blur. So that's with just the blur, and this is off. Now, without the blur, that's what it looks like if you want more of like a jagged edge and not so much uh, softness on there. Cool. If not, then we got this. Now, distortion rate is basically how much pixelation you want. This looks cloudy and looks really cloudy. I want to drop that down just a little bit. Now, I've got, obviously, this is my own personal preference. You could do it however you want. And if you want more, you crank that thing up. If you want less, you bring it down. So I think 40 looks good. Next up, our distortion evolution. So this is the uh, different manipulations you can have. And this is where our animation is going to be. So the way that we get it animated will be using keyframes, which keyframes are very simple. When I first learned about them, they were a little intimidating, but they're actually pretty simple. And we're going to make a keyframe by clicking the little stopwatch on evolution, distortion evolution. And that's going to be our starting point. This is going to be key because when you bring it into OBS, you throw it on loop so that it continues to make that animation happen. But to make it seamless, you're going to have to go back or something close to what it is at the beginning, which we're going to do in, a, in just a sec. we got to get our timing right right now. So let's go to 30 seconds, just to keep it simple, or roughly around. doesn't have to be exact. And we're going to go to a, let's say, 40 degrees. And let's see how fast that is. That's a little fast. Now let's go to 15. I don't want it too fast because otherwise it's distracting. We're trying to make this subtle and kind of look just a little eerie and kind of cool. I kind of like the 15. Let's go with 12. 12 is a good number. I like 12. Right before the horrible number. We don't talk about that number. So now our increments are going to be 12 degrees on the distortion evolution. So you're going to go to there. And every 30 seconds or so, you're going to go another 12 degrees, so 24, to keep it consistent, otherwise it looks jumpy. So you're going to go there, and now we're going to bring it back so that it's seamless. So the easy way to do that 
is go here, copy this, which you have a duplicate of everything that you did. And you're going to take this out of the way. This Remember, the, keep track of these. It goes all the way up to 24. And then from 24, see how it's at 24? All the way down to zero. So this is without the blur. It's a little too chaotic for me. And this is with the blur. It gives a little more texture and it kind of looks a little smoky. Now, to export this, you need to make sure, just like we did with the, uh, the border in Affinity Photo, exporting it as a PNG, you need to export it so it has a transparent background. So what you do, Control M, or whatever it is, Command M maybe, on Mac. I don't know for sure, I apologize. And what you're going to do here is you're going to choose QuickTime. Okay? And keep this all the same. We're going to go to video and we're going to go to animation and you're going to choose 8BPC plus alpha. This will allow you to have that background be transparent. Now audio. This does not have audio. You can have audio around it, but uh, you don't need it. So turn that off. It's a waste of space. Turn it off. I forget to do that all the time. So turn it off. I remembered it now. And you're going to export. So what you have to do is you're going to take... So we're going to take this animated border here. we got animated border 1. But I want to add animated border 2. So you're going to go to add a source. And you're going to add a media source because it is a media source. Now, here, you're going to go find the thing that you just made. Mine is in that, animated border 2. And it won't show up right away, but you're going to throw it on loop. Uh, restart playback when source becomes active, meaning that it starts right from the beginning as soon as you switch. So if you're switching scenes that don't have it, or if you're switching scenes that do have it, but it resets it again. Then uh, you could use hardware decoding when available, show nothing when playback ends. Uh, I just keep all this the same because that's the way it is. Close file when inactive, you could do that if you want to take off some stress off your computer, depending on what kind of computer you have. Uh, the issue with that is it does sometimes lag, so I usually keep it off, but you could if you want to. Now you're going to click OK, and there is the border. Look at it. It's fancy, and it's very subtle. Nothing crazy. So what we need to do now is we got to reorient it so that the cam goes over, or the cam border goes over the camera. What I do here, because I have a vertical cam, as you saw, you go right click, transform, and you go 90 degrees. Now, the cool thing is you can go 90 degrees either way, and you can put whatever gradient side you want upwards, upwards. So if you want the red on top, let's say if you're more of a red person on top, go 180. And you can do that as well. Whatever you want. Easy enough. And we're going to take this. And you can use the shift to stretch it. So use the shift and click. Shift and click. Just covering that border. I usually go like half and half. Like wherever the line of the edge is. Just go half on there. And you might have to fix it again. But there you go. It looks pretty good. It might be a little bit off, but this is just for an example. Try to get the lines as close as you can. And you can kind of see the subtle T there. You see it around the edges here. And because this is blue, it's kind of blending in. But like I said, if you want it a little bit more aggressive, do that. Now, if I go back to the other one, so the animated one, that one is a little more aggressive. And you kind of see the border kind of blowing up a little bit. I wanted it a little more subtle, so this one's a little more subtle. You see it around the edges, but not too crazy. All right, so that is how you do a simple animated border using Affinity Photo, which if you don't know, it is like $50 regular and it's always on sale, so you could always find a, uh, a sale to get Affinity Photo. I highly recommend it. It might not have everything Lightroom or Photoshop may have to offer, but you don't have to pay a subscription fee and it's a $50 investment for 
uh, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Affinity Publisher if you're interested in those. And it's a one-time fee and you get free updates at least until they put up a second one. I don't know if they're going to put up a Affinity Photo 2 or Affinity Designer 2, but it's free updates at least until they make a sequel to their software. And that all being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Helps this video, helps this channel. If you're interested in anything other than uh, cam borders or uh, animations like this, if you want to do other things like alerts or anything to do with streaming or anything like that, please let me know down in the comments. I'd be interested in expanding my content and expanding my creativity with this stuff and making stuff for you. Of course, this is one of many examples that you can do. And I know I'm well aware that there are plenty of things I could have done differently, but this is the way I did it for now. So until next time, take care, be safe, be kind, and I will see you rebels in the next video.